I mean, when you think about it, they have a rookie quarterback, Matt Ryan. We all know about the potential of a sophomore slump. They have <coughs> Mike Smith, rookie head coach, pushed all the right buttons last year. Who knows if that's going to keep up. Michael Turner, first full year starting. Maybe the NFL defenses are going to figure him out a little bit because really the Falcons struggled a little bit at the end of the year. Remember, they played a tough game with the Rams to close out the year, and in that game they had everything to play for. And then, of course, they lost to the Cardinals. They were favored in that game. They shouldn't have been. I wasn't. I fully expected the Cardinals to win that game, but still. So, I have some questions about Atlanta. They lost Keith Brooking. They lost Michael Bowley to the Giants. They... They, um... I just... I, I couldn't name too many people in their secondary. I have some questions there. So, I'm not on the Atlanta train yet. <clears throat> and New Orleans. Maybe it's time for New Orleans to break out and be the team we thought they would the last two years. We're waiting on that defense. We're waiting on, waiting on Reggie Bush. Somewhat we're waiting on their running game as a whole. Waiting on, you know, more consistency from that team. Maybe this is the year, because the division might be open to them. Because <coughs> they have the offense, they have Drew Brees in his prime, destroying every defense he goes up against. So, maybe it'll happen with those guys, but they still have to fix their defense. They still need to find some way to get a productive running game going. It's not going to happen on its own. I don't see a juggernaut from them, especially with that defense. The the North. People are getting excited about Chicago. I'm, I'm telling you guys, quarterback was not the problem in Chicago last year. Kyle Orton was playing well in Chicago, especially before he got hurt. He was doing his job before he got hurt. And then he got hurt, Rex Grossman came in, didn't play too well. He came back, he didn't play quite as well, but still, it wasn't the problem. Their problem was they could not stop the pass. Let's look through the black box of Chicago's season. Week 2, 11 point lead against Carolina, and they blow it. I don't want to put that on the defense because Greg Olson had like two fumbles in the fourth quarter or whatever, but the defense did give up a... 11-point lead late in the game. Week 3 against Tampa, they let Brian Greasy throw all over them. Brian Greasy had like 470 passing yards against them or something. And they couldn't sack him once. He attempted like... I can't even remember how many passes he threw in that game. It had to be like 60-something. They couldn't sack him once. They had a 10-point lead in that game and blew it. Brian Greasy came back on them and... Brian Greasy is bad. And... They, he abused them. Um, Atlanta game. 11 seconds left in that game. Atlanta throws up pretty much a Hail Mary to the sideline, trying to desperately get into field goal range. With like, 6 seconds left. They complete the pass, kick the field goal for the win. It was pretty much a Hail Mary. I mean, it wasn't a 60-yard bomb to the end zone, but it was a desperation throw trying to set up for the final play of the game for a field goal that would have won it, and they completed it, and that's something that should never happen in the NFL. There's another loss right there. Last game of the year, Houston. Playoff lives on the line for Chicago because Minnesota hadn't played yet. Chicago had a lead in that game. I can't even remember how big it was, but they coughed that up too. Andre Johnson shredding them. <coughs> I know some Bears fans are saying, you know, this year Vasher and Tillman are going to come back, make their pass defense better. That's true. That's true, but the point is, Jay Cutler is not worth five, six wins to that team. He's not going to change everything in Chicago. He is a improvement over Kyle Orton. He will play better than Kyle Orton, I'm sure. <coughs> he will make more plays than Kyle Orton, certainly. But 
Kyle Orton, uh, excuse me, Jay Cutler is not an elite quarterback yet. He's good, very good, close to being great, but don't... I'm a big Jay Cutler fan. I've liked him pretty much ever since he got drafted by Denver, but don't... But don't think too highly of him yet. He still has some issues. He is maybe the most turnover-prone quarterback in the league. And I don't see that improving in Chicago. Bad coaching, bad receivers. So, enough about that. I'm, I mean, I think the Bears, again, have the opportunity to be good. But Jay Cutler does not mean as much to them as it would to improve their defense. Because Bears fans, I have seen Bears fans call for Brian Urlacher's head. And that sounds completely crazy, I know, but... He has not been playing well the last two years, and if he doesn't get his stuff together, Jay Cutler can do whatever he wants. It's not going to matter that much. So there's that, too. Uh, Packers. I think the Packers will turn it around this year. I think they have a great offense that's in place, ready to play well week in, week out. I like the players on their defense, but I don't know about their defense team because they're switching to a 3-4. I have some questions about that. I question that. Uh, they have some players coming back from injury. Don't like that. And <clears throat> they do have some holes, some age issues that I'm concerned about. I don't see the Packers being a 13-win, 12-win, whatever team this year. I think they'll be competitive. I think they'll improve on last year. I think they could win 10 games, but, you know, looking at last year, Every time, the, um, every time the game was close at the end, the Packers' defense found a way to blow it <coughs> over and over. So they're going to have to answer the questions about that. Um, Lions, yeah, I'm pretty sure the Lions are going to be bad again. I mean, they might be as bad as they were this year. They might win one game, two games, three games, but... I don't think they're going to get better as of right now. Vikings. You know, the Vikings, they have a lot of good things going for them. Defensive line. Um, linebackers are pretty good. Adrian Peterson. They have some up-and-coming receivers that are good. Offensive line. Gotten overrated over time, especially in pass blocking, but they get it done in run blocking. So. But... There are flaws on that team that bug me. Quarterback, they've done nothing to fix the quarterback problem. It's hard to be scared of a team when they have Tavares Jackson and Gus Farad battling, at, battling it out at the quarterback position, so I don't think you can win a Super Bowl with those guys starting. Uh, secondary. Antoine Winfield getting older. I don't really like a lot of the other guys they have back there. Uh, Darren Sharper getting older as well. Is he even on the team anymore? I don't know. Who cares? He he was starting. To, his game was starting to fall apart a little bit. Um, I don't know. I have some. I I think they. I look at the NFC North and I see three very good but flawed teams and those flaws are going to hold them back from being elite um the NFC yeah that's everybody except Seattle and you know Seattle has their own problems as well 4 and 12 last year right so we gotta step it up the NFC needs to step it up somebody is gotta come go into this and come out 12 and 4 13 and 3 I don't know who it's going to be. If the Giants get a wide receiver, a good one, I think it'll be them. But short of that, it's wide open. I, I have questions, big questions, pertinent questions about all these teams. So somebody step up, get it done, because I'm not going to talk about the AFC right now, but the AFC is stacked top to bottom. And at the end... It, and on the, again, on the NFC side, the goal is to win the Super Bowl. So whoever ends up representing the NFC in the Super Bowl this year, please be a really, really good team that has a chance to go into that game and win it. Because 
this last year was a little embarrassing. All right, I'm out.